Well, let's go and read the number one and two. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the, unto the multitudes of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. And look at the verse two. Wash me. Just only the, the parts that I like it? No. What is it? Thoroughly. Don't you want to be washed like that? Sometimes we come to God and you come with one thing only that you want Jesus to help you. No. God is always, when he does something, he's always perfect. He's going to cleanse us completely. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Go to verse 7. Purge me with Aesop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be what? Whiter than snow. You know, I never saw snow in my country until I came here. And one of the things that I was marveled about snow is how white it is. I was impressed the first time when I saw snow here. But look at that. God can make us whiter than snow. Can you imagine what he's telling us? He wants us perfectly holy. Go to verse 10, because here is the root where we need to go. Creating me what? A clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do you see? That's the root of the problem. Sometimes we want to, many people, we can change the outside of our lives. I can just be nice with the people every day. And usually that's what happens. We tend to be nice with the people that we don't know. Have you noticed that? But at home, you are another person. Is that right? Have you seen it? And this is what we need to avoid. You see, on the outside, we can change a lot. But if we don't change the heart, you know, if my wife can know, tell me, you are such a lovely person. I love to be with you. Your husband, your wife needs to enjoy being with you. That you are a unique person. Don't you think? Your sons and daughters, our sons and daughters, need to see us like a, the best friends that they can have. Is that Jesus for our, in our lives? Is Jesus our best friend? And that's what people feel around you. They want to be with you because you are really a best friend. Don't you? This is the fruit that God is looking for us. And here, David experienced that one and he realized, you know, I was blessed by God. But, you know, and I was lazy probably, David said. And my heart start absorbed by the things of the world. Is that right? That's what happened with David. He conquered a lot, then went to, his, to the palace, and he started what? Looking on the world. He got something that he liked. Covetousness entered in his heart. Those wrong spirits, he realized, because that's what it is. Every time when there is impurity in our lives, let's give the right name. It's bad spirits that is in our life. Every time when you see a person not showing the character of Jesus, not behaving and living like Jesus without sin, it's because there is a spirit that should not be there. And God, Jesus did not have any difficulties to call that. Remember when he was with the two apostles coming out from the city? And nobody wants to hear what they had to say. And those apostles said, Lord, you want us to make fire and fall on this city and destroy them? Look in the Bible and what he said. You don't know what kind of a spirit you have. That's really. This is the fight that we are. We need to be cleansed. But every day, I need to align with the Lord. Be like David. Prayer is number one. Let's go back to Matthew 21, because the cleansing was very special in the second time that Jesus did it. Go back to Matthew 21. 
We saw when Jesus said, it is written. <clears throat> he said, it is written in verse 13, Matthew 21, verse 13, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Can you imagine at that time? What do you think that people from the temple were doing? Merchants and people with business, what do you think they were doing? They were running away from the temple because they already saw the miracles of Jesus. They were afraid, but they were what? They were going away. But there was another group coming in. You see? And the ones who came in, they were holy people or what? They were people who they were sick. People who were suffering. Probably suffering from the results of those bad spirits influence in their lives. Maybe it was people dying. But look at what he said in the next verse. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And what he did? He healed them. I'm so glad. Don't you want to be one of those sick, limp, coming to Jesus? We need to be in one of them. Because the Bible said, we all are what? We all are sinners. We all are sinners. We all have limping. We all are blind in some areas in our life. We all have defects of character that we need to come to the Lord to be seen. We still are not lovely for our wife and husband and children. Or still we don't love our parents like we should love them. If we don't love what we see in front of us, do you think that we love God that we don't see him? Does the Bible say something about it? If we don't love what we have in front of us, can we love God? It will be difficult. Let me tell you, religion is, is probably the best treasure that we can have about God and Jesus is the transformation of our lives. But in this world, the devil is trying to make us believe, I had enough, I don't need nothing else. I accomplish everything that I need. I have my house, I have my car, I have my job, I have my pension. Good, that's fine. But that's not what it is. And this is very serious. So let's finish with 1 John, because here is what another step that we need to. In 1 John. It's sometimes a little... I always ask, do you like when somebody reproves you? We should, right? But the question is, do we like it at the beginning? Right? So you are doing so well, and all of a sudden somebody comes, hey, my brother, I'm sorry, but this is wrong. Wow. It just feels what? Yeah, right? Human flesh is very, it's not really pleasant. Let's go and read. Let's go and read 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. Look at something, it's a very simple principle, but it's very important. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, what it is this? Cleans us from some sins. No, all sins. Don't you want this miracle to happen in your life? But what do we need to do? Let's see, maybe you become Adventist one year ago. And you know maybe from one to hundred, you know maybe one to five. God said, walk in that light that you know. Just walk in that light. Be faithful on that light. Because the Bible said, if you know what is right and you don't do it, what happened? It's called sin. And then 
What can do God for, for us? I'm telling you do this, but you don't want to do it. Can he take you to the next step? If you fail the test, second grade, will you be able to go to the third grade? God cannot trust us more. God cannot give us more of the power of the Holy Spirit because we will misuse it. And this is the thing. All we need to do is just know whatever lie you know, whatever things you know are right, do it. And God here said, if you are walking in the light that you know, here is something that will happen. Look at what he said in detail in the verse. We have fellowship one with another. You will start loving and liking the things that are approved by the Holy Spirit. Would you be, would you be enjoying being with people that smoke? No. no. The Holy Spirit will give you some reproof inside. But if you don't listen, he will let you go. Because God loves freedom of choice. Right? So it's very important. It's very important. The promise is there. All you have to say, Jesus, you said that the blood of Jesus will cleanse me from all my sins. Show me which light that you have given me, I am neglecting it. And believe me, God will talk to you. And he will show you which areas you are failing. And if voluntarily I'm consenting something wrong in my life, that promise won't be fulfilled. Don't be deceived by another gospel. Because that's what sometimes people, I read 50, from somebody who wrote many years ago, we cannot stop sinning. Forget about it. So then what? What the Bible said is wrong? No. Here said he will cleanse us from all sins. What he said in verse, the next one is verse 9. Look at what he said. This is the, the part that needs to be in my heart because if, if I don't recognize that something is wrong, you know, God cannot do nothing. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And then he comes again. And to cleanse us from how much? All. All. And he goes a little bit more. Unrighteousness. Unrighteousness means all those little tendencies that are not right. Anything that sometimes might not look sinful, but are sinful at the end. Because sometimes we say, oh, I'm not doing bad to nobody else. I'm just working. Well, maybe working might be your idol, and you are neglecting God things, and then, by the way, it becomes unrighteousness. And God cannot bless those things. And this, I promise you, is the last verse. <laughs> My kids keep telling me, you said like a five times this is the last verse. <laughs> but, and, uh, okay, but this is the last verse. Matthew 21. This is probably the, the beautiful promises are there. But there is something unpleasant, but it's beautiful, let me tell you, that we all need to do. In Matthew 22, this is, we study how David prayed. Is praying important to be cleansed? Yeah. Very important. It's very important for me, for me to make the choices? Yes. Who is the choice to come and confess the sins? It's, it's mine, right? God gives the, give the spirit of repentance, but it's me that the one that I need to go and confess it. Is that right? It's me who needs to do what God is telling me to do. It's my part. And as I do it, the Holy Spirit is going to be poured more and more and more because God is looking at you. You are following the light. But what you need to do every day, look at in verse 44. Many people, it's very unpleasant, but that's what we need to do. And that's many times is called total submission to God. Total submission to God means you just fully trust that whenever you do what he said, even though you don't like it, 
even though it's unpleasant, but it's good for you. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. Do we, got, do we need to come to Jesus with our broken hearts? This is what he promises. As we fall on Jesus, as we look at him, as we give our lives to him, he will show my defects. He will break my heart and he will fill me with sorrow and repentance. And I will come to him and he will cleanse me from all my sins and all unrighteousness. Otherwise, will happen the next part that very soon will happen too. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind them to power. Should be looking to Jesus right now? Or should be waiting until Jesus comes and looks to the world? Because when he comes next time, it's too late if I have not done the looking at Jesus and falling on him and giving my life and trusting that whatever he said is for my own good. You see, God is so lovely. He sent his son just to show us what is possible to be done in work with him. And Jesus didn't do nothing out of worldly fear. He did all those things because his obedience and his sinless life was because he loved the Father so much. He trusted in the Father so much. And this is what God is looking for us. God is looking for people who is willing to follow those steps. So very soon, God will pour the fullness of the Holy Spirit to finish the work, the work that needs to be done on this earth and take us home. Don't you want that? Amen. Praise God for that and help us every day to continue in that process. So the song for closing is...